welcome back to the Sports Brief Podcast. Today we're going to be covering why I think Afadi Odenabo can take over for Everson Griffin. Um, but before we do, I want to make sure that you guys uh, like, subscribe, and comment. Leave us a comment on what you think uh, if Afadi Odenabo can in fact take over for Everson Griffin. Um, first off, i got to start by saying I absolutely love Everson Griffin. I've been a big fan of his ever since he was coming out of USC. Uh, just I think his loss is a huge loss for this defense. Like Obviously... Uh, l- losing him is huge for the Vikings. He leaders from a leadership perspective, from a production perspective, um, just everything he brought to the Vikings. Now, the, it's interesting because, you know, he did come after uh, a Hall of Famer. Maybe you know him, Jared Allen. Yeah, one of my most, well, he's my favorite player of all time. And he sat on the bench for a while, and then uh, finally came up. And you know, ever since uh, that that pick he got against the Arizona Cardinals, that, that he returned for a touchdown, I just knew this guy could play. So. Um, I, I really think that he's, his loss is going to be a lot bigger than people think. But uh, I do think that uh, Fadio Danibal can still come in and uh, make some plays and, and perhaps uh, in a minor way replace him. And I'm not, but also from a leadership perspective, again, it's going to take a while. I think Fadio Danibal's got a long way to go. But uh, here are some reasons why Fadio Danibal can take over for Everson Griffin. A little bit of a background he is from Jersey City, New Jersey. And he was a seventh round draft pick in the t- uh, 2017 NFL Draft, 220th overall. Now let's take a look at his college production. As you can see, he appeared in a total of 11 games as a freshman, and kind of tore it up. Like he only made nine total tackles, uh, six and a half for a loss, five and a half sacks, one pass defense, and a fumble recovery. Uh, kind of showed out as a freshman. You know, he played in 11 games and uh, kind of showed who he was. Came back the next year, only played in six, um, had three tackles for losses and three sacks. Um, he came back his junior year, uh, kind of up the tackles and everything a little bit, uh, um, posted, you know, 19 tackles, five and a half, five tackles for a loss and five sacks. And then finally his senior year came out and absolutely just showed everybody, you know, he can be a, a dynamic pass rusher coming out with 22 tackles, 12 tackles for loss and 10 sacks. Uh, obviously this guy was showing, uh, as he went through college, he was a, a premier pass rusher that could really get the job done, um, when you needed to. And I believe that's a big reason as to why. Uh, Slick Rick selected him in the seventh round. Now, again, that big value guy uh, and and Andre Patterson still deserves a ton of credit uh, because of everything that he's able to do and uh, and the way that he's uh, kept, made these players come along and play out of their minds. And Afadi Odenabo is a big reason or a big a great example as you know is his latest work of art. Last year he had a total of seven sacks, and if you really notice it. He really came into himself as a pass rusher, and in some cases, as a run defender too. He posted a 74.4 uh, PFF grade, which is impressive. Um, and there's a lot of the good things that you could say about Afadi. I mean, obviously, he bounced around from practice squad to practice squad. Was with the Cardinals uh, the year before last year, and uh, you know, it, it's just a really good story, especially because you know Slick Rick drafting these seventh round draft picks, and it's a question of can they in fact make it? And Afadi has definitely made it. I think that the reason, for, a big reason for that, is it has to, a lot of credit has to go to Andre Patterson, uh, and obviously he's not. Alfredo Odenabo is not the only defensive lineman for the Vikings that was drafted in the later round or middle round, uh, i.e., Daniel Hunter that has come out of his shell and absolutely come and just dominated the entire NFL. Now, Alfredo only has one year. Uh, he, again, he had seven sacks last year. Uh, didn't start a single game, and he was more of a situational pass rusher. But he played some inside too, which is uh, which I think brings a lot of value to the Vikings defensive line. Uh, but there was also a lot of times last year where Afadi showed up in in big situations. Uh, you know, again, I, I I said he was pretty good in the run game, and I think that against the Cowboys, he made a really great play against Zach uh, is Zeke Elliott, excuse me, uh, that on like a third and three, made a tackle for loss, which on the next play. Uh, Eric Kendricks batted the ball down. The Vikings went on to win that game. Um, and that was a big play. Like, it was third and three. They had to run the ball. Uh, and Afadi stuffed the play. And that, again, forced the Vikings to win the game because of, you know, uh, Eric Kendricks. Don't you just love Eric Kendricks? Man can just play. Anyway, Afadi Odenabal continuing to show up uh, later on in the season when the Vikings were playing the Chargers. Had that, uh, had that, oh, excuse me, Daniel Hunter had that strip sack. And then Afadi Odenabal picked it up, went the other way for a touchdown. So, Obviously, you can see a guy that really heated up towards the end, of, uh, the end of last year, and really came into his own as a as a defender for the Vikings. Um, and again, 
he did start up, he did heat up, especially towards the end of last year. I think he had, what was it, four sacks in the last five games and uh, the last game of the season against the Bears. He didn't start, uh, but he did have uh, six tackles and I believe a sack. And if he could have just kept his balance, man, he would have had another touchdown. Um, so, I, again, uh, Fadio Denable is coming into himself. And if you watch a lot of tape, you can see him had better hand usage when he kept, was coming out. Um, and I, I think that a lot of people are overlooking this guy. Now, we said earlier that he could play some inside, and I do have to kind of reiterate here that uh, it was only on a situational level. Uh, there was a couple of times where you could just see him come and come, just destroy people out in the middle, and it was I mean, it was great to see because, again, this guy was normally a defensive end, but seeing him be able to come in, in the inside and uh, kind of supplement the Vikings' interior pass rush was something uh, good to see because, again, Linval Joseph was really effective last year, but uh, not, not as effective as we've seen him. And then Shamar Stefan, uh, he's just solid. He's nothing, you know, like flashy. He's not going to get 10 sacks, but he's going to come in every day, work his, you know, work his, um, work his butt off and continue to do what he does. Um, but, I mean, it was great to see Afadio Denable coming on the inside. That's also just a fun name to say, isn't it? Like, try saying it three times really fast. Afadio Denable, Afadio De Yeah, you get the point. Uh, but and then, if he does bump into the inside next year, you could probably see Kenny Willekes, one of the Vikings' um, seventh-round draft picks from this year, uh, come in on the outside. And, and Willekes might, you know, challenge Odenabo as the season progresses, but I still think that uh, he's uh, Odenabo has done a great job of uh, putting his name out there and showing the coaches what he could do. So I'm not all that worried in terms of what Kenny Wilkes will bring to the table, but I do think that um, having those two in the field will uh, really help the Vikings pass rush this year. So those are the reasons why I believe that Afani Odenabo can come out next year and absolutely tear it up uh, as a full-time starter. Now I think he can uh, he can in a way replace. Uh, some of Everson Griffin's production again. Love Everson Griffin. He's but he's one of the best players uh, as one of the best Vikings of all time, and I don't think there's a debate for that. But uh, again, those are the reasons why I believe Fadio Denebo can take over for Everson Griffin. Uh, once again, leave us a like and remember to subscribe and also comment on what you think if if Fadio Denebo can in fact take over for Everson Griffin. <laughs>